Alrighty then, what the heck we got here? Next jumbled pile of greasy jigsaw puzzle pieces. This isn't going to be all that bad actually. Uh, see we got that piece there. And that piece there. This one more. Come out of you. There we go. That, my friends, is a clutch slave cylinder, or as the Toyota likes to call it, a clutch disengagement cylinder, because I don't think they like the word slave. Don't blame them, really. Hey, these are them. As far as verbs and words go, not about concepts. Don't get me wrong. Man, we're off to a great start already, aren't we? Okay, got some related parts here. These aren't going to matter for this particular video. Those are all related to the slave cylinder, but here we go. What we're going to do is rebuild this. Why? Because we can. It's fun. <laughs> so, you can buy brand new slave cylinders, no core exchange, no core charge, all day long. Uh, Rock Auto's got these good quality ones for about eight bucks. You can still find ASINs out there, the Japanese made ones by Nippon Denso, original equipment style type for Toyota, as well as many other Japanese vehicles. And they're about, oh, 18 to 25 dollars, depending on who you shop with. But this is a decent one. Uh, when this clutch problem came up, turns out we also had a bit of a problem with the seals in here. It went out at the same time. Everything happens to me at once. So we're going to go ahead and rebuild that. Of course, I had the usual problems with this. Got it out. Couldn't get the bleeder screw out to save my life corners rounded off on the nut i even used the correct flare nut which you're supposed to couldn't do it end up having to heat this up with a torch just to get it out of here so we got a new one of those to go in there and i want to show you the basic rebuild on how to do this this covers 75 through 78 Toyota pickups or anything earlier, or even a little later, as long as it's got a three quarter inch bore. Later pickups actually had a seven eighths inch bore. There is a difference. Make sure you get the right one and the right stuff and the right kit. Kit we're using is EIS brake parts, which is good quality. This is actually, believe it or not, made in Japan. And let's see, what's the number here? C7688. This was under $2 from Rock Auto. It's brand new. And right there on the label, made in Japan. You get a brand new anodized piston, two brand new seals on it. You get a bleeder screw cap, and you get a brand new boot. I don't know if that's the right one or not. That doesn't look right. We'll find out. I don't think that's going to fit on there. No. And this is why you never throw away your old parts until you're sure you don't need them. The boot's in good shape. So we'll just probably keep that and recycle it. So you go over there for now. Got our push rod. I already went and cleaned this up on the wire wheel. You got the nut that actually pushes into your fork arm and a lock nut. That's towards the fork. This goes into the slave cylinder. Get to that later. 
that'll get replaced with a brand new one. Found those at O'Reilly's. I'll give you the part number on it if you need it. It's the typical, usual import 10 millimeter by 1.0 thread bleeder screw. I looked all over and O'Reilly's was the only one that had them. Nobody else even had them listed for sale, which I cannot understand because literally hundreds of millions of import cars use these stupid things. But we'll replace that later. I'll get going on this and I'll show you some interesting bits and pieces as we go. And I'll show you how to get this done, so stand by. Okay, so obviously I've already taken this apart and cleaned it up. So basically what you want to know is this boot is on over this end. And you need to pry that boot up off over this lip, get it off of there. The rod is through it. Just take the rod with it. Goes that way. Just take the rod with it, pull the rod out. Which will leave you that. And this piston will be in this bore. Down in there. It's got a little cup in the end. Let's see if I can get you some light. Okay. And that's where the end of this rod sits, down in here like that. You can sometimes turn these over and tap them and it'll, this will fall out if your seals are really bad. And if they are, you're going to know because you ain't going to have no clutch. No clutch at all. If not, you need some compressed air. Because there's no way to grab this with pliers and yank it out of here if it's down, down in there below that lip. So basically... You've got your inlet here for your hard line. That was that U-shaped piece you saw in the bag. You disconnect that. So once you got it to this point, what you do, ow, is your piston's going to be in there, down in there. All right, so lay it down on a piece of cloth, at least a shop rag, something with a little strength to it. Fold it over, hold it down, get your compressed air, go on the back side and then into the feed, and just give it a couple short blasts until it pops out the end. The rag will keep it from flying across the room, hitting your wife in the head, making you sleep on the couch for two months, or shooting your dog. Trust me, it's happened. <laughs> just a little safety. But there you go, and once you get that out, I hit, it, I hit it with brake clean, I hit it with brake clean inside, and I check the, the bore inside. Make sure there's no rust or pitting or anything like that. This one's got a little bit of pitting on the outside lip, but the piston doesn't travel that far up, so that's okay. I did clean this. If you do have any little uh, minor rust or pitting, you can take some 400 grit sandpaper or emery cloth, or there's another thing out there called a brake hone, which you put on your drill, you put some oil in here, put it in there, and it spins, and there's little abrasive stones that hone this up nice and smooth in here for you. You don't want any little sharp projections for these little lips to get caught on and torn and cause you problems. All right? So that's where we're at right there. And before I forget, these are the... Um, Brand new brake bleeder screws I got from O'Reilly. And there's a part number on H9407-2. You walk into any O'Reilly's and give them that number and they can find these. Again, they're metric M10, which is the size of the nut itself, the nut part, right here, times 1.0 thread. As you can see, and get it steady just about right they can be these are these are just a little bit longer but that's okay they both have a pointed end on them and let's see it should have a hole in it yes it does just like that one does but if it's a little bit longer that's okay 
It just means it's not going to be screwed in as far as the old one was. So no big deal. So once everything's clean and your bore looks good, give you some fresh brake fluid. Let's put a little bit on my finger. Swab the inside of the bore. You want the inside lubricated. No jokes, please. There we go. Just like that. And this is already lubricated, but I'm going to put some on here anyway. Be generous with it. You don't need to skimp on this. Okay. Looking good. Small end goes in first. Remember, this cup end goes out. You may have to work this a little bit to get it to go in. First one, second one, and it's in. Just push it down in there a little bit. No need to get crazy. All right. Let me grab this. See that a little bit better, I think. Take your bleeder screw, and that goes in the side hole, not in the back, in the side. Try to screw it in straight. There we go. And just screw it in by hand until it's just sort of finger tight. You always want to use a flare wrench on these. I just want to check to see where it's at. Yeah, see, that can go a little bit further. And you don't want these cranked down super tight. That's firm. That's fine. That's all you got to do. So we've got that in there. Oh yeah, since you've got your bleeder cap, you can go ahead and put it on there, if it'll fit. Come on, you. There we go. Just like that. And here's that new boot. I cannot see how that is going to stretch around this. I think somebody put the wrong boot in this package, to tell you the truth. So, I'm not going to be using that. Back in the package you go. go. Get out of here. Uh, before we do too much no, okay I'll get to that in a second I'm getting ahead of myself so smooth part goes down in that cup okay which means the boot is going to be up here I'll give myself a little bit of room by moving these nuts up Because, you see how it's got a little step right here? That's where the top of this boot is probably going to sit. You can try to shove it through the hole. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't, sometimes you got to lubricate it. Is that right? Just like that. Now, Here's where I was getting ahead of myself.
grease. There's a little bit of common axle grease, ball joint grease, whatever you use for that. Okay. What I like to do is get just a little bit and get it down here in this cup and smear it around. Just about like that. Just a little small pea like that. Pea size. And just take a little bit more. And uh, put it on the end of this rod. Just like that. This allows the end of that rod to slide around in that cup not get bound up and it keeps it from rusting that's literally that's all you need that's all you need to do until i've had this can for a while i need a rubber band to keep the lid on it now this should fit around the outside of this we'll see how well that goes Usually, this is about the time I go looking for the soapy water. Get one side on, try to hold it in place. Get the other side, try to get it over that. Uh, I know just the tool I need. Hang on. Okay, here we go. It pop, just like that. That was nice. It's nice and seated down in there. Don't worry about where this ends up because it's going to adjust itself anyway once you start bleeding it and pumping it up that's it it's done ready to go back on the truck like I said um, rebuilding these is not hard just a lot of little bits and pieces of information if you don't know then you know a little bit annoying That's about all there is to it. Ugh. Once this gets back on the truck, we're going to bleed the fluid and get the air out of the system. I'll show you about all that, how to do it. With hydraulic clutches, there's particular little things you need to do to make sure you get all the air out of the system. Otherwise, you're going to have a spongy clutch or a weak clutch. And nobody wants that. So good to go. Hope this helps somebody. Once again, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.